Hey everyone, this is Andrew Ty and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you how to go ahead and emulate PlayStation 2 games on the Windows computer. And today I'm going to be using the emulator called PCSX2. So today I'm going to show you how to get everything set up and running so you can play PS2 games on your Windows computer. So if you scroll down, you'll see that YouTube recently added a super thanks button. So if my video helps you today, what you can do is to donate some money and the comment that you write is going to be highlighted so I'll be able to see it. All the money donated is going to help to support the channel and future content that I create. So now we're going to is go to the pcsx2.net website and then click on the download page here and then I'm going to find the latest versions of PCSX2. Now you might notice that the latest stable release is 1.6.0 at the time of recording and this was last updated in 2020. So you might want to consider downloading a more recent release which contains more compatibility fixes and stability and so I'm going to scroll down to the nightly build section and you can see here that this has been updated as close as one day ago. So this is going to have the latest versions of in development fixes. However, it might be less stable because there's going to be less testing done on this. So what I'm going to do is to go ahead and click the Windows button here. So generally speaking, the AVX2 refers to CPU instruction sets, and this is going to be the version that you normally want. If you have an older computer, you might want to make use of SSE4, but AVX2 is going to be correct for most people. Here, I'm going to click on download here. Now we've downloaded this file. Here I'm going to click on File Explorer. Then I'm going to go to my Downloads folder, and you can see that we've downloaded a .7z. So this is a specific kind of zip file, and if you're not able to open this, what you can do is go to the website 7-zip.org then we can go ahead and download the 64-bit installer we can open this up and then we can install 7-zip and once that's installed that means that we can go ahead and open this 7-zip folder what i'm going to do is to right click on here we go to the 7-zip and then we're going to extract to this folder and once the folder is extracted we can double click on it and then we're going to have pcsx2 here so this is a portable application which means that we can move it anywhere i'm going to move it onto my desktop and here we're going to be able to access it from the desktop or you can put it in any other folder that you choose here i'm going to double click and now I can double click on the PCSX2 AVX2 EXE. I'm going to open it for the first time. So now what we're going to do is to go ahead and configure this. So the first thing that we need to do is to add the BIOS. So we're going to click on config here and go to general settings. And then we need to select a BIOS. So what I do recommend that you do is to dump your own BIOS from your own PlayStation 2. However, if you do a search for PS2 BIOS, you're going to find some files online. So today I'm going to show you my BIOS files are kept in my BIOS folder here. And then what we're going to do is to copy them over. So the main file you want, it has this kind of format scph10000.bin. I'm going to select all of them here, right click and press copy. And then we're going to go back to configuration where we need to put our BIOS file. We're going to put open an explorer. Here we're going to allow this to create a new folder under the desktop folder here, press create. And now what I'm going to do is find the BIOS folder here, right click, now click paste. So now that the files are located here, I'm going to close explorer and then we're going to click refresh list. And this has given us several options for which BIOS to use. I'm going to click on the USA one and then and click apply and then press create. Here we're going to press OK. So now our BIOS is set up, we're ready to go ahead and move on to the next step. So what I do recommend that you do is to set up a gamepad. So I'm going to go to the gamepad settings here, and then I'm going to go to pad one, and then I'm going to make sure that I set up my device correctly. So I have an Xbox One wireless controller attached, and that's already picked up. What I do recommend that you do is to go to this website called Gamepad Tester. If you pair your device and you can wiggle your buttons, I can make sure that it's paired correctly. And then here we can make sure that within pad one and pad two that we have the correct input selected. So this has already been configured for X input, which is for the Xbox One wireless controller. Here you can select other types of input, or if you do want to play with the keyboard and mouse, you can actually reconfigure all the keys for the keyboard. For example, if I go here, if I press the shoulder button and then I press say the one key, then that's going to reconfigure that to the one key there. So now that we're ready to emulate a game, what I'm going to do is to go to my CD DVD section here and select ISO selector and then press browse. So now we're going to go ahead and find our ISO file. So I've got my folder here. And basically if you want to download PlayStation 2 games, you should really dump them from your own personal collection. Or if you search the name of the game and then type in the word ISO afterwards into Google, you're going to find lots of links for different games. So the game I'm going to run today is Shadow of the Colossus. So I'm going to select the ISO file here and then press open. And now it's loaded up the game in the DVD drive. So now that that's selected, what we need to do now is go to system and then we need to click boot ISO. So that's going to boot the game up. So you can see here, this is the window where the game is actually happening. And this is a kind of console log here, which you can ignore. Now this game is loading up. I'm going to control it with my wireless controller. So here I'm just going to make sure that I change some settings. So one thing that I would like to do is change the aspect ratio. I'm also going to change the game to progressive scan. That's going to normally offer better graphics. Press yes. 
If your game supports widescreen, what I also advise you to do is go to config, go to graphics settings. What I also recommend that you normally do is to go and change the rendering resolution. So the most important thing here is to tweak the native PS2 and switch it to a screen resolution that works for you. So I'm recording at 1080p. I'm going to change mine to three times native and then press OK. And that's going to increase the resolution of the game. Here I'm just going to maximize here. You can see the resolution is now 1920 by 1344. So that's going to look much better than it did before. Here I'm going to double click on the window. So you can actually full screen this by double clicking on the center of the game. However, I want to keep this so I can see the actual frame rate here and the resolution there. So now I'm going to start the game. So now we have the game loaded up and it's running at a very nice speed. So in game, we've set the setting to widescreen. However, it's still four by three here. So what we need to do is go to the window setting, go to config, go to general settings here. Then we just scroll down and find GS window. And then we need to change the aspect ratio to widescreen here. So this is going to apply for all games, but basically you can tweak this if you have a game that's four by three, but a lot of games do have this widescreen option. Here I'm going to press apply and now it's set the widescreen aspect ratio. So now that all of the settings are there, I can actually go ahead and play the game. So now that I've set everything up, I've got the widescreen aspect ratio and this is running at 1080p at really good frame rate and it's all working great. So if I ever wanted to save the state, what you can do is go to the menu here and then go to system and press save state then this is going to allow you to quickly load up the game. So if I move over here and I will say want to come back and then load the exact place I was when I press save state, then that's going to put me back to where I was before. And also when I'm done, I can go ahead and shut down the ISO. And if I wanted to select a new game and click on CD DVD, go to ISO selector, click browse, and then I find another game, for example, God of War 2, and then I just boot it up by pressing boot ISO. And now I've gone ahead and loaded this game too. So that's how you go ahead and load up different games on the PlayStation 2. So anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like, please subscribe. I've got lots of other video tutorials like this on my YouTube channel, so please check it out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.